the life of the Lord. He who believes in me, don't he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming that now is when they will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. <laughs> We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also. And that shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the first things are passed away. Please join as we sing the hymn printed on your program. Great is thy faith.
Amen. Indeed, God is our faithful God. Let us pray. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, and to us. Today, you have renewed our strength. You have renewed our hope. Most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement. Pray that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace. So that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by the trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O Lord our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you, and may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life, lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us, through the same Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. You may be seated. My brothers and sisters, this morning we are met in this solemn moment to commend our sister Grace Audrey Smith into the hands of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed, and whose name alone we have salvation. Let us then recall the life of our dear sister departed, and in humble trust, hear the words of Holy Scriptures. This morning, as we come to celebrate the life of Sister Grace, I want to acknowledge our Superintendent Minister, the Reverend Sister Mollins, our Serpent Pastor, Pastor Audrey Sinclair, and we have others within the congregation from the circuit the Spanish Song Circuit. And I want to also acknowledge those from the Mount Rasa congregation that Sister Grace was a member of Mount Rasa. And so we also want to give God thanks for your time that they can host us this morning. On behalf of the Spanish Song Circuit, the membership of the officers, we want to extend our condolences to the bereaved family of Sister Grace. We will go into the order of worship, and so the psalm comes to us from Psalm 116, verse 7, and verse 12 through 16, and this will be read for us by Parents, yes. Psalm 116, verse 7, 12, and 16. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his goodness towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of his people. Precious is in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. That's first. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bones. Very free. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
I invite the following persons to give their tributes. Tara Wicks, Paul Crosser, Anthony Church, and this will come by Sister Anthony Master Father, Barrett Nichols, perhaps these persons.
contributes for the race. The most to the generous person are those who get excited and speak and the soul of grace for joy and effective grace. Sister Grace, more affectionately called Auntie Grace, was a member of the Northwestern Methodist congregation. She was fat, yet pleasant, and jovial. Auntie Grace was always in church once she was in Jamaica. She was never late. Upon arrival, you would find her seated in the chair bench to the left, doing her crossword puzzles. After greeting her, that would change though. She would engage you in conversation from what's happening in the world to what's happening in the lives of her loved ones, especially her grandchildren. She would literally light up when she spoke about them. Auntie Grace was quite sincere and was not afraid to speak her mind. She was a giver at heart, and this was evident in both church and the community. Any favor asked of her, once she was able to do it, she would. I remember when Sister Madame died, um, after the funeral, Auntie Grace took a liking to me, I don't know what my former principal, Mr. Whitaker, would have shared with her. But she took a liking to me, so much so that the very dress and shoe that I wore to Mr. Whitaker's funeral was bought by Auntie Grace. I remember the last time she was traveling, I asked her if she would be able to purchase a laptop for me. I change out some money and I did not have all the money. I think it cost $350 and I gave her $320. And when she came back the very following day, she called me and she said that I should come for the laptop. I took the $30, but she didn't take it. She said that her son got it at a discounted price. And so that was who Aunt Grace was. When I went to her house, she would um, make some things. I don't know where she got her menus from, but she made some things and you would surely enjoy them. I remember I love for avocado. I remember there was a mixture that she made with avocado. I don't know what else was in it, but trust me, when she was preparing it, I was wondering about how it would taste. But after she finished and I tasted it, it was delicious. I pray that even in this time, as you mourn as a family, as we mourn as a church, that you will be comforted knowing that she served and she served well. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much to the first slide uh, share. All right, because it's clock. Thank <laughs> you. 
about the bill with certain and she didn't say too much, but more importantly, she didn't she didn't tell my mother. <laughs> I was always welcome, welcome in the house. Oh, yeah. 
I did in these times, we really need to hold on to Jesus, amen? Yeah. So that we can overcome the struggles. I now invite the person who is to do the remembrance to come. I'm here to say just a few words about my cousin. It was on March 8th, about 5 a.m. to be exact, that I last spoke to Grace. Whether I'm home or away, we were always on the phone, shooting, laughing, and sometimes just talking about something, nothing, or just anything. Grace was my special friend, my counselor, advisor, counselor, cousin, and a sister I've never had. Her infectious smile, kindness, willingness, always wanting to help others, her warm personality made her easy to love. My view, she was a strong and a no nonsense person, telling you as it is, but in love. When I spoke to her that morning, I was simply trying to get to prevent her from going outside too early in the morning. After a long time, she we were when are you coming home? I did answer at the same time. I paused and she said, I'm missing. I miss you bad. Not because you're my helper, but I miss you. Frequently, she would complain of stomach aches. I tried to encourage her to go back to America to see her doctors, but she was not ready. She was, at that point, she said to me, if you get a song, we're not afraid of it. I was saying, well, not yes, so I will know about Little did I know I was she was saying goodbye since goodbye. Ever since we met, we were like two peas in a pod. My family will miss her dearly because we have lost another piece of the puzzle like our son. Since we met, she has always been Auntie Grace. Sister Grace calls Mama. She has always been a tower of strength in my ups and my downs. As for my husband, she was always advising me and telling me how to go about his health at the hospital or where he I remember one day he was in the hospital and he went to and something was wrong. He was in the don't touch it, don't touch it. Because I was complaining to the nurse and nobody looks at me. She then turned to me and said, what do you think? She, he's your husband, but he's my family too. And she stepped right there and fixed what was the fix on the hygiene. That time I was trembling in my shoe. So Grace loved her family and was always trying to fix everything and to give advice because for me, she always know this. Her generosity and respect and caring attitude for people made it easy to love and appreciate her. The photograph, Lola, when I, what are you what cooking? You were stop by? And I would say, didn't I stop by yesterday or the day before? So what? Uh, I just want to talk to you or say something to you. Boy, she did love her a mini coin porridge. And 
We all look for, she said, as the clerk where you come from. <laughs> In so doing, we was always together. And I could go on and on, but I'm leaving some for somebody else who's gonna still repeat what I've said. <laughs> Here's a memor a memorable uh, point that I chose for her. Those special memories of you will always make me smile. If only I could have you back just for a while. Then we could sit and talk again. Just like we used to do. You always, you always meant so much to me and always do. In fact, you are no longer here, but will always cause me pain. You are forever in my heart until we meet again. Close friend and a dear sister. I could borrow us, sister Lola Wendley, and also uh, a member of the Mount Grasa congregation, her sister, sister Grace. I now invite Doris to call us back. So we'll have a point to print by Michelle. Michelle. Footprints by Margaret Collins. One night I had a dream. I, I dreamt I was walking along the beach with God, and across the sky flashed scenes of my life from my life. Sorry. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to me, and the other to God. When the last scene of my life flashed before us, I looked back. At the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at times of the past life, there was only one set of footprints. I also noticed that it happened at the very lowest that it's the time in my life. This really bothered me, and I questioned God about it. God said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the most during the most troublesome times in my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why. In times when I need it the most, you will leave me. God replied, my precious, precious child, I love you. And I will never, never leave you during your times of trial and suffering. When you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Amen. Thank you very much, Michaela. We'll now have Mr. Marlon Brown. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'll be reading two poems. I've got um, one from Grace's sister, Julia. Text me to see if I could read this out for it. Now, everybody has heard how great Grace was. Yesterday, when I was at the Ebenezer Centre, I've been going to work there. I had 16 men come up to me and say, you know, you've got to say something from me, Joe. Because Grace used to pick the ackley, cook it, bag it up, and call me and say, Joe, I've got some food for the men. So I used to come down and pick up my rows, pear, ackley, rib, you know, she cooked it up for them. 
and especially to the family that you really know about. Really need your support. Right, this is from you long. Grace, G for giving, R for resilience, A for able, C for courageous, E for entertainment. G, Grace leaving her home in Jamaica to care for her family in the US. Resilient, never letting her health conditions get the best of her. Okay. 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 My friend, my confidence. The bond and memories we share can never be replaced. I will always love you. Vicky, who has just sent a message to ask if I could be this poem because he said that she looked at me so well before he left to go to the States. <coughs> the Lady of the Hands. She bought the Lady of My Delight, a shepherdess of sheep. Her flocks are thoughts, she keeps them white. She guards them from the sweet. She feeds them on the fragile colors and folds them in the, the sleep. She owns material, sorry, she owns maternal hills and bright, dark valleys safe and deep. Her dreams are innocent at night, and chase stars making. She walks the lady of my delight, a shepherdess of sheep. She holds her little thoughts inside, gay paper and leaves. <laughs> And and she walks the of the of Thank you. Thank you very much. And then we will now change our position and find the persons who have shared their tribute so far. And at this time, we'll receive the offering. And the offering today will be in the name of Miss Yorta Congregation, Airport, and also the Mount Rasa Congregation. And that asks us to give generously, as especially in these times, there are many around us who really need our care, and as Sister Grace would have lost us to care, I shall care for others. So we could stand and sing the tear. We are now the whole in the songs. <laughs>
Let us pray. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast. in the Savior's love. Father, we thank you for your love and for your grace, for your mercy, for taking us here safely this morning. And Father, we thank you for the life of our sister Grace. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you so much. Thank you, God, that we were able to be a part of that experience. And as we receive this offering to take care of those who cannot take care of themselves in some way, I pray, oh God, that we will not only give our offering, but we will give ourselves so that we can extend your love to others. So, Father, thank you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I thought somebody with me to share my I feel this presence every every day. Oh, 
with a head from that, and a carry personality, and dress is perfect fit. School is still hard work, though. So like any 20 year old who's a nurse, my mother would take the night off here and there. Some of those nights, just a pass by, and a bunch of movies and the things that they do. It was very sweet. Except, taking the was just her sneaky way to go out and see man. Racism and life. Eventually, the same around turned into those who openly dating, and that turned into a misplaced part of marrying my father, Ken Smith, also known as Biz. And not long after that, investor, general officer, which worked as a registered nurse in Big Wild. Next one, the long shot is here, general handler. After about four years, the little family three decided to try to handle America. Where in less than a year, over in Washington, D.C., Grace had her second child, a son, Stephen Slim. Yes, I said Stephen. Apparently, when I was born, that was my mother's first choice in my name. But my dad preferred to have a joke. She lost that fight. And when she told me the story years ago, I got the feeling that she never really got over it. Now that was Grace. You see, that was a part of my mother's character that we can all agree upon. She did not like to lose. Like when she thought that the lines at the bank and Windsor were too long and they should provide seating for the elder, after several heated, I fall in the face with the manager. She won at seats for five. She was not going to lose that fight. And all fights were important to Grace. Like one day we went to a burger restaurant. The waiter gave my mother a burger that wasn't seasoned right. You know what she said. This doesn't have to taste. And she wanted her money back. But the waiter thought she should pay. Let me tell you, Grace got her money and ate the whole burger. <laughs> she wasn't doing that fight either. That was Grace. I think her competitive nature is why the most, thing, most fun things I remember doing with my mom were like long nights battling her in a game of strategy, us spending lazy afternoons arguing over who was going to win and judge who was court that day, and us in the kitchen watching other people compete in a favorite game show. What was the name of that favorite game show, Pete? Jack. Jack. If you knew my mother, you know she loved Alex Rebecca and Jack. She actually got to go see a show in person. She was such a huge fan, I took her as a surprise. We sat there in the studio audience, the lights dim, and the man said the word. This is Jen. Through the show, Grace was on the edge of her seat, taking it on in. The daily doubles, the final Jeffrey question, she was blown away. And I knew it because for the entire 30 minutes, she never uttered a word. When it was over, the lights came up, and she excelled. We started to leave, and then the producer helped me arrange to skip my mother's stops and presented me with a special Jeopardy hat. And then he presented her with a special Jeopardy hat. Now I was thinking, these hats, you know, always remind us of the beautiful mother son day we had. The producer walked on, and Grace turned to me, smiling, and she said, Thank you, for this time. thank you so much. And I'll never forget what she said next. Let me get your hat. I want to get it started. <laughs> Sure. Why did she want my hat? Grace said she wanted to get some. Someone who needed it, even if it was just to lift their spirits. My mother was a giver. I want to give that to someone many times. So many times I want to reach the best that saying on her. Inside this urn of oh, Ash Grace, I want to give that to someone's name. I know other people are spoken specifically about her generosity. All I say, all I say is that over in America, more like Cheryl had a lot of work with you to keep up on the generosity. Cheryl made many a trip to Home Depot with Grace because someone needed a demonstration. Or she could drive to Grace's house to send James' house to let her take a wheelchair that someone else needed. For all the time she had to go on the internet and go on, I would hear Grace call from her room. Cheryl! Yes, Grace? Order me something from Amazon, please. If someone needed something, Grace was going to do it, whether she could afford to or not. But that was Grace. And some things about Grace came to complete shopping. Like when I was in high school. By then, she had divorced and had been working for some time as a geriatric nurse. I used to say she worked at the hospital for old people. Okay, so one day I forgot to have her sign something I needed for school. And she said, 
I had to bring it to the house if I really wanted it done. So I go over. I've never been there. They direct me to the fourth floor. I see elderly people being wheeled about, the nurses are going here and there. And I see my mother, she says the following. So we're walking, and nurses keep stopping and ask questions like, what they should do for this patient, or where this patient should go. She's like, give Mr. Crane 26 seats home. No, I want you to check on Mr. Chappelle in 10 minutes, not 20. I couldn't understand what was happening. I said, what? I said, you can't see what to do. She said, because I'm their boss. Boss? She had an office and everything. 16 year old me had no idea my mother had a job when she was in charge. Mm -hmm. Just mom. Mom was making some dinner, mom was full size. So I learned that day she wasn't just mom. She was a head nurse, racing and RN, specialized in geriatrics, knowledgeable and respected by our colleagues. She was a boss that was also place. Now I'll just have one last story, and I'm going to wrap this up. When I graduated from college, this is a couple of years before raising me back to Jamaica to take care of my mother and decided to make a career to my home. This was 1995. I was playing with the idea of moving to California. I was scared, so I decided to go visit for a week, see what Los Angeles was like, and then make my decision. I took all my graduation money I was gifted, bought my plane ticket, my hotel room, and I figured out I had just enough money left for a week. So the day before I left, Grace came to me and said, Kenneth, she never promised me. Kenneth, how much was your hotel room? Stay for a week in a late hotel is a lot of money. She said, I'm going to give you a check for that. What? This was a woman who never had any money. <laughs> Ma, I need money to go to movies. I don't have money for that. Ma, I need money for movies. I don't have money for that. Ma, I think I broke my foot. I don't have money for that. <laughs> I told her, no, no, everything's paid already. Keep your money. She said, no. She was giving to me, and that was it. I was stunned. I finally said thank you and left it at that. So yeah, I visited LA, decided I'd move and try to get some more care. Now, 20 odd years later, my mother and I were at dinner, and I just wanted to know. So I asked, Ma, why'd you give me that money back? I already had my bills covered for the trip. We didn't have a lot of money to give. And I was going to visit LA. It could have been all for nothing. She said, I gave it to you because I wanted you to go. Before you went off and had success, that at the start, I believed you. When she believed in you, she believed you. And that was grace. She did a lot of things, and everyone has their own grace. Michael, Chipson, James, Kai, and <laughs> They have grandma. Nesta has Aunt Grace. Boxley has my sister Grace. Some of you have Miss Smith, Miss Grace, or Miss Grace. I'll uh, always have her as mom. We love you, mom. Thank you. And that was Grace, all of us who know Sister Grace. And I just want to extend condolences to the family on behalf of the Reverend Pauline McCarthy, who has served in the circuit for some time and is now in the month of being home for the circuit. And she would have sent the message to say that of Sister Grace's hospitality to her. While we had a challenge that was working on the mass of their Yurtan, Sister Grace took very good care of hosting her for that time. And she's eternally grateful for that opportunity that Sister Grace could have extended and had of love and friendship to her. We'll continue as we we'll have uh, I am free, read by Don't pray for me, for now I'm afraid. I'm only going to talk about waiting for me. 
took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and went to bed. I couldn't stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, or play. Past such a month to stay that way, I found that he was a good place to live. If my heart had just left the world, a friendship share, a laugh, a kiss. Oh, yes, these things I see with this. You know, I've heard of the of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine for me. My life's been full. I see her much. She brings the time. The time's the love that's touched. Perhaps my friends have all to breathe. But my kids now have been too afraid. I felt her heart and share with me. God wanted me now to set me free. I invite Mrs. Cheryl Smith to call for their tribute. That morning, 
and life we loved dearly, and death we do the same. Did not go alone. Part of us went with you. We got home. We left. 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 Thank you very much, and thank you to all the persons who have shared in the tributes. We now go into the ministry of the word. The epistle comes to us from Romans chapter 8, and reading from verse 35 through to 39, and this will be read for us by Pastor Audrey Sinko. Reading comes from Romans chapter 8, reading verses 35 to 39. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? The hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. The gospel from John chapter 14. Verse 1 through to 6 and verse 27 will be read for us by Sister Anthony Pastor Morgan. Let us stand for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel is according to St. John chapter 14, reading from verses 1 to 6, then 27. All right. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's where I am, there may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus says unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, 
Neither let it be afraid. The gospel according to Christ. Praise be on the Christ. We'll now have a selection by Mr. Ben Roy Forbes, followed by the words of comfort from the Reverend Stephen Morris. You will comfort you. You will 
strengthen you and he will guide you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we come at this moment, we come, Lord, to hear from you. So I pray even now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together will be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen and amen. Now today, for a few moments, I want to just talk to you from what is called the Shepherd's Psalm. Psalm 23, a psalm that we all should know, but I realize that one thing this present age is teaching me that I can't take things for granted. Amen. Unfortunately. So I want to remind you of what it says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in great pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my heavy boy, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise the Lord. This psalm has brought comfort and renewed hope and strength to several over the years. And I hope that today it will bring us who are gathered here, and especially the family. Renewed hope and strength and comfort to carry on. In the country of New Zealand, they have, as you might know, a very thriving sheep industry. They said that they are actually number one in the world. It's so often that every year during what is called the lambing season, there are several mother sheep who would die giving birth to their lambs. At the same time, there are several lambs when they actually are born, they would make it. So the shepherds in New Zealand came up with what is called a wonderful plan to try and deal with the situation and so they decided that they would try and match the orphan lambs with those mothers that had lost their lambs while giving birth but they came across one big problem that they didn't bargain for. The interesting thing is that sheep, mother sheep, don't give suck to any other lamb than their own. So they might have to go back to the drawing board. They might have to try situation. And so they came up with a plan. And what they did is that in order to get the mother sheep to take the orphan lamb, they would skin the lamb that had died to that particular mother. And then strap that skin on the orphan lamb. And then when the mother smelled the smell, oh, glory, hallelujah. 
as you would say, everything woke up. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. When we look at Psalm 23, from the very first line, we are told, the Lord is my shepherd. Because you realize that one important and crucial thing about the shepherds in New Zealand and the shepherds around the world is the fact that they are special people who care and who have compassion, especially for the sheep. And so we realize that the Lord being our shepherd, he cares for us every step of the way. And so no matter what is happening, no matter the state of our life, no matter the, the hardships that we're going through, one thing that we can be assured of is the fact that our Lord, who is our shepherd, is with us. Every step of the way. Give him praise and glory in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so no matter what is happening. Because for the past two years plus, as a nation and as a world, we have had some serious challenges because of the pandemic. And of course, those challenges are not over. And so there are several who today are wondering what will happen in the days that lie ahead. And I want to say, in no uncertain way, to those of us who are gathered here today, that we don't have to worry because the Lord is our shepherd and he is with us constantly. Hallelujah. Praise God. That is where it tells us. And as we said earlier, I shall not leave you, nor forsake you. I will be with you to the very end. And that is a promise that we can live by because our God is a great promise giver and a great promise keeper. So we know we can trust him. So come what may, we must be comforted and strengthened by the fact that the Lord is our shepherd and that he is with us every step of the way. And the next thing I want to touch on is that when you continue, it tells us I shall not walk within that simple statement. It means that the great and holy Shepherd, he provides for us. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so again, I've heard several people complain during this pandemic time. And there is one interesting saying that has taken Jamaica by storm from before the, the pandemic. And that saying is that several cigars are not not one. And by that they mean that well, life hard, life tough, and they have problems to actually make it. I want to say here today in no uncertain way that again, no matter who you are, no matter what's happening in your life, Almighty God has promised us that we shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. And so we can give him praise on this wonderful day. Hallelujah. Praise God. So no matter what's going on, look to God, the author and the finisher of all things, the ultimate shepherd, because he shall provide. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the third thing that I want to touch on today is the fact that we serve a great, big, wonderful God. One who looks after his children, one who never, as he said earlier, forsakes his own, and one who will lead us beside 
office in Wallace for his time. All oh, that means in my mind is that as he leads us by the still waters, is that he leads us into a place of great peace. Peace that passes all human understanding. Because as far as I'm concerned, if you are in the will of Almighty God, then you will have peace with your God and you will understand. Because when the rest of the world and everybody I keep up on and carry on. You, once you're in the will of Almighty God, you will have peace in your very soul. I firmly believe, and until I'm proven wrong, I will keep on saying it and keep on believing it. That when you are not in the will of Almighty God, you are living a miserable life. And I don't know if you can think of individuals who, you know, when you come across them, God have mercy. What? I don't know if you can picture some individuals when you walk in a business place and they greet you. Lord Jesus. It's like they feel sour. And they look by you. And they laugh. The attitude is like, I want to make you happy for me at this time. I want to make you happy for this time. And somehow with that attitude, you just feel like turn around and go back where I come from. I believe that people like that, and there are several of them. I'm pretty sure you all will agree with me that there are several individuals who seem to be in the wrong vocation, the wrong employment, the wrong place, at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing. But I want to say that on the other side of all that, once you are in the will of Almighty God, then there is joy unspeakable. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Because God's word even tells us that yes, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Because as far as I'm concerned, what important ingredient of being a child of God is that you must be joyful in the Lord. Give him praise and glory in the house of the Lord. Because as God's children, you must be happy people. As God's children, you must show the world what it means to be a child of God. Mm. And to be a child of God means that you have joy in your very soul and your very heart. So when you come out, even if your pocket empty, even if you never have no breakfast, you can rejoice because you know that the great shepherd is watching over you and he will provide a glory to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. And so having said all of that, I want to say one other thing. And that is Time is running out. And I'm sure several of you have heard that over and over again. And so I might start to say, but wait, I hope that the time you're all about this. The interesting and the important thing is that God was so. The word of God tells us that only the Father knows when the curtain will come down on life as we know it, not even the sun know. So when nobody jump up and start to talk about them know say God will come back next time and next year. Then them say, please say, a foolish is the matter. Because the word of God tells us clearly that no one knows the time. Only the Father. 
fear. We are called upon to live in a certain way because I'm sure that all of us who are here today, no matter the state of your life, you are going to heaven. Because in my short lifetime, I am yet to come across somebody who will look up and say, Hey, Pastor, you know someone who are here. So no matter how wicked people are, no matter how they not live for the Lord, they want to go to heaven. And I'm sure all of us here will want to go to heaven. In order to get to heaven, we have to do certain things. And one important thing we need to do is that we need to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth as our Savior. And we must be in a relationship with Him. A relationship that transforms. A relationship that empowers. A relationship that leads us along the right path that leads to eternal life. But you know, in the time now, especially during the pandemic, I realize that several are drifting. And it's unfortunate. And I'm saying to those of us who are gathered here today, those of you who are listening to me, that we are at a time, at a stage in our history where we need to draw close to the Lord. Because when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time as we know it shall be no more, the big question is, where will you end up? And so the question of our house now is this, suppose the trumpet should have sound no, what will you do? When you jump up and say, Hallelujah, praise God, a long time they wait for you, Lord. Or would we die under the bench, or jump through the window, or run to the yard? Because we know so we're ready. God is giving us you know, time to get ready. And I'm saying to you today, don't waste the time. Because none of us know when that trumpet is going to sound. And when that trumpet sounds, we better be ready. Because if we're not ready, just like the five foolish virgins, we will be locked out and left behind. And so it's always in your friends. You know the state of your life today. And you know the wonderful thing, and this is something that really gives my heart a warm feeling. Because, of course, it is so easy for you guys to fool me in. Because I can't go as far as I'm easily fooled. Mm -hmm. But one thing you can do, you can fool me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so God knows what is happening in your life even now. And so he's saying to you, my child, break up your body ground and come to me and I will be blessed. And so the big question I want to make that is this. Do you know where you're going and how to get there? And the simple answer to all of that is it is a big yes. That you need to live in a relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ. And He will lead you there. Because as John 14 6 tells us, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Hold on to Jesus. 
and everything is going to be all right. You can praise and glory in the house of God. Let us now stand peace and be a firm of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as Sister Mass and the Barnes do not come and pray for the very time. He's here. Hallelujah. Yeah, He's here. Amen. Amen. Can we sing that chorus? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ as her Lord and her Savior. 
And so we want to call on you now, God, for the family left behind. My loving family. Hear and talk about Sister Grace and mom and cousin and friend. Hear them tell about the goodness. Hear them talk about how she cared, how she loved, how she shared, how she went an extra mile. God, how we thank you. So here they are in your presence, God. I know you know them by name and nature. I know you know them because God, you created them. You know exactly what's in their thoughts, in what we know. You know exactly what will happen, even as the service closes, God. We ask you to lay your hand to come to you know, God. Lay your hand and give them the confidence that you love them. Give them the confidence that even as you have taken a loved one away, you are still there. And you are the same God who provided his loved one. You will not leave them. You will not forsake them. Times when they gather, all oh, children is. But wonderful members they have gone. They can cope with many blessings. And they can have sweet and real refreshing times thinking about their loved one who might not be in their midst at the time. But the members are so good. I ask you, God, to make a way for them. Even as we are going to be celebrating Mother's Day on the 8th of this month, God, comfort them. Let them not grieve at those without hope, but know indeed that she has lived a good life and a long enough life, God. This story says what you promised she made it over that God and we thank you. Comfort their hearts. And even now, God, as you know, we all have our difficulties. We all face our challenges. You know, God, whatever is happening in each life. I ask you, God, to let them never look away from you, but look to you in all things, knowing that you are the answer, no matter how rugged the way is. You are there for them. I ask you, God, that he has you have take over, sister. That you will bring one to take over. Take over the reins and be there as one of a leader in this family, God. As they had always been able to look to Sister Grace. That one will stand there, as it were, just there, ready to embrace anyone. Those who are successful, those who feel like failures, those who have hardships, those who feel that like they are not getting the attention. Whatever it is, God, choose that one who can cope so that that one will be there. Keep the family together to let them know how very special they are to you, God, and as a family. Thank you, God. God make choices. For they will know that they didn't choose to be here and they didn't have the chance to choose the family they are in. So when they can really be caught in the many places, when they can be together as one, remind them God, it's you who place them in family. They had absolutely nothing to do with it. It's all your fault. Man and God, that you are never hard. In fact, it's just a prayer of me. Just opening up their hearts and they will experience you in a mighty way, in a loving way, in a caring way, in a providing way. Again, I ask you, lay your hand on this Bring them into that relationship with you, God, as they're in a world of confusion. They're in a world where some, so many things are wrong and being declared as right, and so many things that are dead right are declared as wrong. Take away every confusion from them, God. Because we're in a confusing upside down world. And let them be able to walk right side up, 
looking to you, trusting you, even when others might not quite understand. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to pray. Thank you that you hear us. Thank you that you answer. Thank you that long the disturbances of the God, love of the God, you will still be the same God. And remind them too that there can be a future reunion, not just there, some bare lives. Remind them that the cards are each one that set you as a personal Lord and Savior. Wonderful reunion, but you have no end. Indeed, it will be glory and glory and glory. Thank you for the ever present God. I will pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Let us continue. I know you drive my sister to come. Good afternoon again. Um, uh, this came me. It's a tribute from her grandson, her husband's grandson. My grandmother was my heart. She showed me what it feels like to be passionate, caring, and what it means to be patient and willing to be the most challenging moment. She always talked about her family, especially the grandkids. All of us, the oldest, all smiles. Kirsten, James, and Kenneth. But she really always has been more than a small. Just so close. Just always said. She meant she me will always be the lady in my life. And I hope to be the example of her love in the world one day. I remember when I had a bad day in football, when I first started. I spoke on all the mistakes I made, and she told me, Nah, my God, why are you so hard on yourself? I know you can do it. You just have to be strong. The next game I had, Three sacks coming out of the past sacks, and we won the game 30 And after being down in the half, first half, so, so much pain, I was okay without fighting. I love you, Grandma. I love you, Mom. She showed me the world. Where yeah, I could exist. I couldn't read when I first came to me. And with her love and understanding, as well as her family and friends treating me like their own, I became more. I will always love you for that. And to Laura, and to you, Michaela, and to Jill, Stefan. Always watching out for us till this day. I love you dearly. Thank you for, thank you, Grandma, for always treating me like a royal. Thank you for being great. I love you dearly. Great love for being here. And continue to watch us. Watch us. Thank you. Amen. Let us continue. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your image for the eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, O Lord, and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, the Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of grace whom we today will lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessings of grace life has brought to others for our service to our generation according to your will and for every happy remembrance of our life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness which have followed her all the days of her life, that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have loved and served you faithfully in the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Let us stand. The commendation. Eternal God, who have made us whole, and yet nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for our redemption, we commend the remains of our sister Grace to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her and to let the light perpetual shine upon her. The Lord's prayer. Our Father, our So now, may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide in us all now and forevermore. We'll sing the closing hymn. Through the love of God our Savior, all the